If you're watching this video because you want to know the definition of retroactive and proactive interference, or maybe you'd like to see some examples to better understand them, well, you're in luck, because that's exactly what I'm going to be doing in this video. First, let's go over retroactive interference. What is retroactive interference? Well, retroactive interference occurs when new information interferes with your ability to recall old information. Things that are more recent and fresh are easy to remember, but old information feels far away, even if you spent some more time learning it. In short, retroactive interference is when you can't remember older stuff because you've learned something new that seems to have overwritten it. You can remember this because retro means from the past, and interference means to disrupt. So basically, you are disrupting memories from the past. Here's the first example. Let's say you've spent a few years learning a second language in high school. In this example, I'm going to be using Spanish, because that's what I learned. But lately, you're trying to teach yourself something new, like French. Well, when you try to go back and test your knowledge in Spanish, you can only seem to come up with the words in French. That's because French seemed to have overwritten your Spanish language. Now I want to talk about the Postman study. A study from 1960 is one of the earliest examples of identifying retroactive interference. The study contained two groups. Both groups were given a list of paired words to memorize, while the second group was given a separate list of paired words. And after the second list was introduced, both groups were asked to recall the items from the first original list. Well, the results showed that the group who were given the second list actually had a more difficult time remembering the first list. The new information seemed to have interfered with their ability to recall older information. Another thing that's important with this is called the serial position effect. So new information is usually more fresh than old information in your brain, and it seems like common sense. The serial position effect actually proves this, and it shows that when people have to remember a list of information, they're more likely to remember the information learned last, most recently. The information learned first is also commonly prominent, but the information in the middle is usually forgotten. I actually have a whole video on this topic if you'd like to learn more. Our short-term memory storage is limited, so unless information is repeated and considered to be prominent, many items on the list will take a back seat to information that was more recently picked up by the brain. Now let's go into some more examples of retroactive interference. Let's say you move to a new address. After a while, you may start to forget where your previous address was, even if you lived there for a long time. Or let's maybe say that you see your ex, and you accidentally call them by your current girlfriend's name. That's an example of retroactive interference. And lastly, maybe you learn a series of choreography. Well, when it's time to perform the choreography, you mess up the first part, but you nail the finale. Next, let's move on to the opposite type of retroactive interference something called proactive interference. So older adults are more likely than young adults to experience proactive interference, and it makes sense. They've got a lot more memory stored away, and those old memories can interfere with newer ones. So when you think of the phrase, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, maybe it was just because of proactive interference. Before we get any further, what is proactive interference? Well, proactive interference occurs when old memories interfere with your ability to encode and retrieve new information. Psychologists theorize that it's difficult to create a new memory that actually contradicts or is too similar to older memories. You can remember this because pro means like to advance or something in the future, and interference means to disrupt. So proactive interference means trouble creating future memories. So the first example is maybe you write down the old year. Writing down the date in January is a struggle for a lot of people. You feel like you've just gotten used to writing down 2020, and the next thing you know, the year changes and it's 2021. However, those old memories or habits stick. Or maybe you've changed your phone number or email address. The same thing might occur. Example number two is learning a new language. The oldest information, the language that you're most fluent in, may frequently interfere with the new information that you're trying to learn. But if you're learning a third or a fourth language, that second language may also even try to interfere. So let's say you're learning Spanish, but you're already fluent in English, and you've spent many years learning Italian. If you accidentally let English or Italian words slip while trying to speak Spanish, you can blame proactive interference for the mishap. Example number three is new students. So if you're a teacher, trying to learn 20 or more students' names can be difficult. Teachers with five or more years of experience actually have over 100 names logged in their memory from over the years. It's actually crazy how many teachers remember my name. So you can't blame them if a teacher accidentally calls on a student by another student's name. This is because of proactive interference. Lastly, we have example four. If you've learned about proactive interference, it's also likely that you've heard about retroactive interference. 
it's very easy to get them both mixed up. The information is stuck in your head, and when you try to learn what proactive interference is, you may accidentally remember retroactive interference, which is why I included the little part about how to remember them. Retro is in the past, while proactive is in the future. In retroactive interference, you can't remember old memories, but in proactive interference, you can't form new ones. Another thing I want to talk about real quick on proactive interference is that there's some studies that suggest that it happens to any memory, whether it be stored for a long time or is freshly learned. And I also want to say that there are some studies that say that proactive interference only happens in working memory. As I end this video, I want to leave you with a question. How do you reduce proactive or retroactive interference? One study suggests that being exposed to and aware of how proactive and retroactive interference actually work can help you diminish its effects. When participants were exposed to multiple experiences that could cause proactive interference, they were less likely to continue to be affected by proactive interference if they knew about it. And personally, I think one of the best tips to reduce any type of interference in your memory is called spaced repetition. It seems that throughout time, as you try to train your brain to remember something, continually teaching it the same thing over and over and over again is the best way to reduce any memory errors and ensure that you remember it correctly. That's called spaced repetition, learning the same thing throughout time. Seems to be the best way to memorize something. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're interested, I actually have a whole series on the topic of memory. You can feel free to check it out in the description below, along with a free memory test that I've developed. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.